Mom, this isn't funny. Seriously. Okay. My favorite thing about your father is... Ow! Uh, oh, that he likes to do his own laundry. That's pretty much it. Oh, uh, well... I don't like to do my own laundry. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, seriously, Mom, can, please answer the question. Come on. Well, that's all I got. That's it. That's all she, see how she treats me? Yeah. That's all I get is I like to do my own laundry, really? Okay, fine. My favorite thing, my favorite thing is that he never forgets uh, birthdays or oh, anniversaries. anniversaries? <laughs> okay, fine. I will be more profound. Okay. Uh, my favorite thing about your father is that he loves you as much as I do. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, don't forget the. Caterpillar eyebrow? Oh, well, I mean, how could you forget about that? First of all, I do not have caterpillar eyebrows. Second of all, you, I am going to, you, you better, better, you better run. run. You, you better, better run. run. You better, you better run. run. You better run. run. Ah, ah, ah. I love you guys. Aww. I love you. I love you too much. I love you more than that. Mwah. <laughs> This is Joyce Miner, WKRC in Detroit, reporting on the devastation that has hit Japan. The level of damage over such a vast area is hard to comprehend until you see it. Soldiers from all over the world, including our own troops, poke their way through the wreckage of entire towns, hoping for a noise or a cry. In truth, it's remarkable that more people didn't die. In the most difficult to reach places, the most badly hit by the tsunami, they are still looking for survivors. The United States military has deployed units to help with the rescue and to bring supplies to the victims. It's pretty hopeless in these freezing and miserable conditions. They have no food, water, electricity, or gas. The loss is breathtaking. Thousands have died over there. But 300,000 are left holding onto their life as authorities struggle to deal with the magnitude of the situation. Our local troops from all over the Detroit area have been arriving daily to help with this grave disaster. This is Joyce Miner from WKRC, Detroit. I keep telling them, practice makes perfect, right? Well, I can tell. It's working. I miss you, Mom. I miss you, too. But before you know it, I'll be back to tuck you in. Nobody tucks me in like you do. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. No offense, Dad, but, uh, lights out, soldier. Isn't exactly Mom's style. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I tell you what, tonight, after lights out, I want you and you know that we are both looking at the same moon. Okay. I'll do that, Mom. Can I go play now? Not now. Come on. Hey, I saw that. Let him go. He's a kid. I think one recital is enough for the night. Mom, you're the best. Okay, you can go. I want you back by 6 o'clock, okay? I'm making you an extra special dinner. You got it, Dad. No soldier left behind. I love you, Mom. I love you, too. You spoil him too much. It's because I love him too much. It's so what's this special dinner? I am making frozen chicken enchiladas. Oh, so you've mastered the microwave oven. Hey, nobody can nuke it like I can, huh? <laughs> How's it going over there? 
Oh, it's just been non-stop since we got to Tokyo. There's thousands of tsunami victims relocating to higher ground. What about the aftershocks? <laughs> That's nature's best wake-up call. I woke up three times last night. Where are you at now? Uh, we're on our way up to Waukee City to set up refugee camps. It's just been crazy. I mean, really crazy non-stop, but we're doing a really good thing for the Japanese people, so. I'm really sorry. For what? I should be the one over there, not you. If I wasn't on medical leave, oh. I... No, oh, don't, don't, don't beat yourself up. It's not your fault. Nathan needs you here, Maggie. I know. But he's lucky to have you. I don't really know about that. I mean, if we're not careful, the kid is going to turn into the poster child for frozen dinners. <laughs> no. I'm sure he'll be fine. He's got a great dad. Now, the frozen foods, I would do just about anything for a delicious frozen meal right now. Okay, well, I'll keep that in mind when you get back. Don't, don't try to be a hero. Okay, just be safe over there. I know. No man left behind. Maggie? Here's the house. This will be us. We'll throw the rocks here. Got it? Hey guys. Can I play? I don't know you guys. You think Nathan has what it takes to run around with us? No. I have what it takes to run around with anyone. Oh yeah? This is your ticket to become one of us. Come on. You want to be one of us or what? Come on, let's go. Thinking, kid. Why did you do that? I don't know. You broke my window. I'm sorry. Sorry? Sorry is not going to pay for my window. Now, is it? No, sir. Do the right thing, kid. Now, get out of here and go home. Chicken a la Georgie. Hey, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. What's wrong? Park it. No. Okay, somehow I feel there's a little something behind that nothing. Spill it. Why aren't I big and strong like you? Um because you're 10. Jimmy's 10 and he's big and strong. Well, Jimmy doesn't have what you have. A heart? Yes. Duh, everyone has one until his dad. Yeah, I know everyone has a heart. 
but heart is so much more than just that, okay? And in yours, yours is very special. How was that? Remember when you had heart surgery? Dad, please, I was three. Yes. Okay, well, when the doctors fixed you up, they said that your recovery was gonna depend on the strength of your character, and that is when I knew. Knew what? That you were gonna be okay. See, these days, science, you can, you can put a new heart in someone and make them get real big and strong, but what they can't give you is the character that comes along with that heart. What's character? Character is something that everyone possesses, but very few put to good use. A lot like common sense? Exactly like common sense. Nathan, the value of a human being is not based on their bones or how big and strong they are or how tall they are. It's based on the conviction of their character. And you, you have enough for an entire brigade, buddy. Hungry now? Yes, but I gotta do something first. This character thing is gonna leave me broke. Well, we're not sure how to say this, but uh... Wife. She was on her way to a refugee camp in Milwaukee City as they crossed the Takahama Bridge. Ten. We just talked to her this morning. They haven't recovered anyone, but we're sending a search and rescue as we speak. They're doing their best. And be sure we'll do everything in our power to find her. If you should need anything, anything at all, please don't hesitate to contact the base. I just want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. We all know that Maggie was a great neighbor. We're just hoping and praying for the best. Now we'd like to ask Nathan to see if he'd like to play something on the piano for his mother. Nathan? Hi, I'm Jessie. Short for Jessica. Hi. And you're Nathan. Good guess. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry to hear about your mom. There's nothing to be sorry about. I thought she died. She's missing. Not dead. Missing? Where? In Japan. In Japan? She was on a tsunami rescue mission. She was very brave. She still is. I didn't mean it that way. It's okay.
Spring Street, and I just wanted to let you know if you need anything. We provide free counseling to the families of fallen soldiers. Do you play the piano? I used to. You should keep playing. I'm not very good. I wish I could play the piano. Why don't you? I'm musically challenged. Not if you put your heart into it. Then you should continue to play. Wait, you tricked me into saying that. Whatever it takes. That's my mom. It's nice meeting you, Nathan. Yeah. You know what? What? I believe anything is possible. Me too. Keep the faith, buddy. Mom, is that the best you can do? Laundry? That's all I got. Seriously, that's Mom. All, that's, see how she treats me? You see how you treat me? Oh, that's all you get. That's all I 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 get. Doctor, what can you tell us about the growing number of vets in the area suffering from PTSD? The number of vets suffering from PTSD is probably a lot larger number than we really know. Here we have over 200 patients. Even though these veterans have integrated back into society, it's really not uncommon for them to relapse. PTSD is a very hard thing to understand. A lot of people have no idea what these vets have seen and been through. And what we want to do is we just want to raise awareness. And we need the family and friends to know that they need to always be there. Thank you so much, Doctor. Um, we do appreciate your time. I know it's really important for the society to understand what these vets are going through. Really, all we want to do is to make the public aware. Can I help you? Mr. Peters? Yes. Hi, I'm Mrs. Jones, and this is Mr. Cruz. Nice to meet you. We're here to talk about Nathan. We're with Child Care Services. Excuse me? According to our records, Nathan doesn't have a father or guardian listed. He has me. His birth certificate doesn't list a father. And there aren't any adoption papers filed, which makes Nathan the responsibility of the state. Please get out of my house. Mr. Peters. Please. No. Please, Mr. Peters. Our concern is Nathan's welfare. It appears as if the child is on his own. Well, he's not, OK? And you're not taking him away to some institution. With his mother missing in action, we have to make sure things are in order. Everything is in order. He is my son, and that is that. Mr. Peters, we're trying to protect you and him from further legal misconduct. Legal misconduct? Are you, are you kidding me? Doesn't being married to his mother give me some, some right of legal guardianship? You would think so, but that's not the case here. You have to fill out proper documentation. She got shipped off so quickly because she speaks Japanese. Okay, we never had time to do the paperwork. The sooner we take care of this, the sooner you two can be reunited again. Nathan doesn't even know. He doesn't know? No. She, she and I met when she was a single mom. And right after we got married, I got deployed to Iraq. A, a year later, when I came back, we just kind of, just kind of picked up where we left off. We have to make this right. 
I don't care what those papers say or don't say. I am the only father he's ever known. He is my son. And I'm not gonna let you take him away from me. We're not the enemy here, Mr. Peters. But we have a duty, and it's to protect the child. If I, if I agree to this, where would you take him? He'd just be placed into foster care until we clear all this up. Look, Mr. Peters, this is the only legal way. Nathan? Hey, Nathan? Buddy, time to get up. Buddy? Nathan? Hey, buddy? That's what I'm talking about, Kenny. I heard about this place, Louise. You sure this food is good here? Yeah, they got the best lunch in all Detroit. I thought you said your wife made the best lunch in Detroit. Was she there when I said it? Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you can have her lunch if you want. No, I don't you want sure? it. No, I don't all want right, it. I'm sure I don't want it. <laughs> you like lamb chops? Yeah, I okay. love them, man. <laughs> I'm Frankie Darcel, and I wanted to interrupt the broadcast to bring you a very urgent missing persons report. In danger of being a runaway, his name is Nathan Peters. He's 10 years old. He went missing on August 14th at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He stands about 4 feet, 2 inches tall, and weighs about 65 pounds. He was last seen in the Plymouth area. Now, anyone with any information, please call 1-800-MISSING. That's the number to the Detroit Police Department. That's 1-800-MISSING. Now back to our regular scheduled broadcast. Hey, Nathan. Hey, Nathan. Hey, Nathan. My knowledge still save me even in the night time I know you still see them bright lights them bright lights 
them bright lights in your head. You see them bright lights, D E C R O I T. More yeah, we printed it right now. Can you grab us some more paper? Sure, where's it at? They're right there. Any word? We sent out an all points bulletin. With the help of the community, I'm sure we're going to find them. I hope so. Identify yourself, little soldier. I see you're a soldier. Ma'am? Lieutenant Peters. Oh, yeah. At ease, soldier. Sit down. Don't you think it's a little dangerous for a little kid like you to be walking around here? Where are your parents? Missing in action, sir. So it looks like we're going to have to set up camp then. What's your name? Nathan. Nathan, I'm Miles. Hey, Captain Miles. Well, the bars on your jacket gave you away. <laughs> like every good soldier, I see you know your ring. Yes, sir. It's a little nippy out here. Wait here. Yes, sir. Take that. What about you? Uh, my jacket to keep me warm. My mom's jacket is pretty good, too. Where is she? Well, I told you. Missing in action. Missing where? Well, if you knew, she wouldn't be missing in action, would she? George, everything's gonna be all right, you'll see. Shouldn't have been so careless with the adoption thing. It's okay, you just didn't know. Ignorance is no excuse, though. Don't worry, we're gonna make this right. Go and play some. Well, Captain, I'll play for you. But first, you have to help me with this. I hear it's the best in all of Detroit. Thank you, little soldier. You gonna play something? Oh. Nice, kid. Down. Can't stop the world. 
from spinning around and all we've got is each other but we're all sisters and a brother Call in the night, all right, little soldier. This is your bunk right here. Good night. Good night, Captain. I love you guys. I love you. Good night, Mom. Rise and shine, little soldier. Why did they take everything down? We need to break camp every day. You never know when you gotta relocate. I know what you mean. Okay, soldier. What's your mission? I'm not really a soldier, Captain. Really? soldier. I ran away for a very good reason. There's no good reason to run away from home where people love you. That is unacceptable, soldier. And what's your excuse, Captain? I don't have a family. And besides, I'm not eight years old. I'm ten. Mm, ten. Got it. I can't go back. Not now, sir. Well, you can't stay out here. I like the people here just fine. Yeah, most of them are okay. But there's some danger out here, too. What's wrong? I just feel like... like I'm missing. But in the inside. Have you ever felt that way, Captain? I can't believe what I've done here. Made a mess, and it's so clear that I've got a lot of growing up to do. Just tell me how to fix it. I'm not going to force you home. But I am going to ask you to help me out with a very important mission. You name it.
Come with me. Put this in here for now. You ready, little soldier? Yep. Let's go. Heroes don't always look like heroes. Sometimes smaller and different than you think. They hide among the crowd. They may not make a sound until the moment they see someone in need. Then they shine. Yeah, they shine. I don't mean to be rude, but regarding this mission, remember, I'm not really a soldier. You know what the true definition of a soldier is? No. The true definition of a soldier is an active and loyal member of a group. You commit to that, you're a soldier, no matter what the cause is. My cat Miles been thinking about your cause. You know what your cause is? Your cause is to find yourself. And when you find yourself, you'll be able to find your family. Why are we here? We need life back there. You mean batteries? That's right. Batteries. And they got plenty of them in there. They got so many of them, they throw them away, even if there's life left in them. Why would they do that? Don't know. I never asked. I'll just go for that container right there and take what I need. So you want me to go there and just take them? There's nothing wrong with that, Nathan. They're going to throw them away anyway. So what about you? Me? Captain Miles? Captain Miles is your lookout. Captain Miles got you covered. May I help you? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to scare you. It's, it's you. Yep, and this is my home. What are you doing in our recycling bin? Oh, I was just looking for batteries. <laughs> Everyone knows you don't recycle batteries. Apparently not. <laughs> so why are you here? Just uh, passing by. You're really far from home. Are you with your dad? No, I'm with... Jesse, lunch is ready! I'm coming! I gotta go. Where to? Come to lunch with us. You can tell me there. No, I can't. Jesse! I'm coming! Come on, I can tell something's wrong. Tell me, please, what is it? Okay, but you have to promise not to tell anyone. But... You have to promise, so you won't see me again. <sighs> okay, I promise. Okay, I'll tell you later. Where can I hide? There's a door on the side of the house. It leads down to the basement. No one ever goes there. It's safe. I'll check on you later. Okay. I'm 
coming. Pam, there's got to be something we can do. I mean, what are we going to do with all those children? We can't let this happen. Okay. Yeah, all right. Call me later. Is everything okay, Mom? Everything's fine. Just eat your lunch. I'm sorry, sweetie. It's just the funding to keep the orphanage open. It wasn't approved. We don't know what to do. Jared? Can I take the rest of my lunch up to my room? Okay, but just this one time. Yes, Jared, what's going on? I see you're not very good at hide and seek. In your information, I'm very good at hide and seek. It's just I know and counted to 20 and I had to think fast. Oh. Here, we must be starving. Thanks. So what's going on? Your mom isn't going to come down here, right? No. She's very busy right now. OK. What's going on? How did you know where I live? I didn't. So then why are you here? I came with a friend. And where is this friend? He's out there. And is this an old friend? Met him yesterday. That doesn't qualify as a friend. Captain Miles does. We know Captain Miles. I haven't seen him in months. He moves a lot. So are you going to come clean and tell me what's going on with your father? I ran away. Something must have happened. They were going to take me away. Who? I'm not sure. This man and this lady came, and they said that something about my dad not being my real dad. And what did your dad say? After arguing for a while, he finally agreed, so I ran away. I didn't want to go to some institution. That's for crazy people. Not all are for crazy people. How do you know? My mom works for different institutions, and they do good things. I'm not taking any chances. So you prefer the streets? At least there I'm free. It's very dangerous. Come to think of it, I had fun last night. You're just lucky you ran into Captain Miles. How do you know him? He worked for my mom until one day he just stopped showing up to work. Never came back. What kind of work? He did everything. Best handyman in the world. He's a fine soldier, too. Nathan, if you let me tell my mom, she can clear all this up. Please, don't tell her. I have to. If you do, I'll run away again. All right. I won't. For now. But eventually, you're going to have to go back to your dad. You mean the dad that's not my real dad? He never told you anything? Nope. Sometimes parents don't say anything because they don't want to hurt their kids. What if they take me to another dad? They can't do that. Could they? That could be a problem. Okay, you can't tell anyone until we know for sure. All right. I'll tell you what, my mom and I are leaving town for two days. Just promise me you won't go to the streets. Then where will I go? You can stay here. You can sleep. You can sleep in, oh, that thing. And 
and there's plenty of food in the fridge, but the one upstairs is this one. Okay, thanks. Daddy! I gotta go. Yes, Mother! Nothing? Okay. Mr. Peters? Yeah, Jimmy. My friends and I were thinking that maybe we could help. You guys have any idea where Nathan could be? No. I thought you guys are good friends. Not lately. You've been pushing him around pretty hard, huh? Tell you what, you guys want to help, go get those flyers and pass them around, okay? Sorry I broke your window. Actually, his rock didn't fly too far. It was my rock that broke your window. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. That was a foolish thing that you did. But you know what? It takes a real man to admit when he's wrong. And thanks for apologizing. Now, let's grab some flyers and go find Nathan, okay? Okay. Let's okay. go. Thank you, sweetie. I'll get the alarm. Hey, Jared. Hey, everything all right? Yeah, did you talk to Kim? Called him twice, but got her voicemail. Hi, Jared. Hey, Jess. Oh, got my sunglasses. Jess, you didn't set the alarm. You have to wait for it to beep twice to make sure it's on. Did you change the meetings, Jared? Yes, it was two o'clock to three, just like you asked. Great, thank you. I love you too much.
This is uh, car 51. Uh, we're at the Strasser home. We're going to check it out. Over. It's a zone two interior sensor. It might be a false alarm. Copy that. This house again? Second time this week. doesn't really seem to be anything here, just like last time. Must be the cat again. Trips the alarm all the time. There's a five zone alarm at 451 Spring Street. Any cars in the area respond immediately. This is car 51. We're on it. Let's get out of here. Yeah. I knew you would come back. If you are reading this letter, little soldier, you have made your way back to the park. So let me tell you something. Son, soldiers, and I mean every soldier, have three things in common. Courage, honor, and character. I can see you possess all three of these qualities, as I am sure you have learned these lessons from your mom and dad. Well done. So when I asked you to help me with a very important mission, I was leading you to the people that can make you whole again. And remember, anything missing can be found. Captain Miles. The wife, she was on her way to a refugee camp in Milwaukee City, and she plunged into the river a hundred feet below. I love you, Mom. I love you. He doesn't know? He never told you anything? How did you learn how to play the piano like that? I don't know. I just kept having thoughts of my mom and dad, and then, and then my fingers took over. Are you holding out on me? No, I'm. I'm serious. I. I, I was just thinking of my mom, and then, the music, took over my fingers. I don't know how to explain it. But, just like that. You were the one who said anything's possible. I did say that, didn't I? Thank you for letting me use your house. You're very welcome. I hope I didn't get you in trouble with your mom. We'll see about that once your dad gets here. My dad. What is it? You know, my dad. It's not really my dad. I heard once that Anyone can be a father. 
but not everybody can be a dad. He sounds like a real dad to me. scared me. You should never run away like that. I didn't know what to do. Hi, Mr. Peters? Yeah. Hi, I'm Kimberly Jordan, and I'm the chief administrator for this orphanage, and this is my sister, Lysandra. I clearly told Miss Strasser that my son is not an orphan. Well, I'm not here to dispute that. We just want to find the best resolution for your situation. Mr. Peters, this may be a good thing. This orphanage is registered with the state, and your son can stay here while we process your documentation. They treat the kids very well here, and I'll be around to keep an eye on him. You all want to meet me in my office? We'll be right there. Okay. Can I stick around, too? Why don't you show Nathan to the rec room? Come on, I'll show you the rest of the game. It's okay, little buddy. I'll be right back, okay? Hey. I love you. So you too. She's very fond of your son. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I really appreciate everything you've done for him. It was all Jess and Captain Miles. Captain Miles? Your son lucked out while he was in the streets and ran into a friend of ours. Well, where is he? I want to thank him. We don't know where he is. He suffers from PTSD. Uh, we think he might have had a relapse. Gather around, guys. I want you all to meet Nathan. Hi, Nathan. I'm Charlie. So, are you moving in with us? Looks like I might be around for a while. Well, I have an extra bed in my room, if you ever need it. That's very nice of you, Charlie. Yeah. Guys, we need to talk. What's wrong, Jesse? The funding to keep the center open has been denied. We have to raise $40,000. Is that it? We should go walk to the bank. I should have that much money in my saving account. This isn't funny, Scooter. Oh, I see you guys have met Nathan. He's going to be staying with us for a little while. Is that okay, buddy? It's fine, Dad. I'm sorry about this whole mess. I'm going to make it right, though, okay? I know you will. Dad? Yeah? Have you heard anything about Mom? Nope. No new news. I'm going to go with Ms. Jones and Ms. Kim. We're going to fill out a whole bunch of paperwork, and I brought you some clean clothes. Okay. And in the meantime, we have our scheduled visit to Children's Hospital to visit Jasmine. <laughs> She's one of our kids who's taken ill, and we'd like to see her at least once a week. All right, you go with them, and I'll see you back here tomorrow night. And don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. Hey, 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 you know if you need anything, Lysandra's here to help you, okay? Okay. Take good care. Yeah. It's a miracle. Okay, everyone, we have one hour. So behave yourself. Each and every day. Mm. Scooter. Anyone else? Okay. It's a miracle. When life is hard, we get strength to go. It's a miracle 
How kids get healed and are given hope. Hi, Bagley. Hi, Bubbly. Hi, Becky. How are you feeling? Good. I feel good. Who's this? This is Nathan. He'll be staying at the center. I don't know. He's pretty cute. Might get snatched up pretty fast. He's not up for adoption. He has a father. Lucky you, Nathan. Jasmine, when are you coming home? Soon. Really, really soon. That's what you said the last time. Can we go to the garden? Sure, we can go to the garden. Reach out to help each other It's a miracle It's a miracle Ooh, it's a children's miracle Look at all the TVs in here <laughs> You see what I see? was good, buddy. How did you do that? I'm not sure. Kids, let's wrap it up. We'll be leaving soon. Jasmine, we have a problem. What is it? Looks like they're going to be shutting down the center. They can't do that. I'm afraid they can. The owner of the building is selling out to a company that wants to build a parking lot in that location. Where are we going to go? They'll probably send us to different classrooms. You don't have to go anywhere. What did you have in mind, Becky? Fundraising. What? Well, how do you think we can stay here without paying any money and getting treated? They raise money through the Children's Miracle Network. But we're not the Children's Miracle Network. The only thing we have in common are that we're all children. How are we going to raise $40,000 without a miracle or a network? Well, I can't do everything for you, but... What are you looking at? $40,000. How many 10-year-olds do you know that can play the piano like you just did? I don't know any. Exactly none. Which means you would be a 
great attraction. Yeah, like the pen exhibit at the Detroit Zoo. And how many people came to see that panda? Thousands and thousands. And why did thousands and thousands come to see that panda? Because pandas are very rare in this part of the world. You get it? I'm a rare panda. Bingo. But you forgot one thing. I would have to perform, and I've never done that before. Kid, where have you been for the past hour? But this doesn't count. Well, I think it counts just fine. Me too. Me three. Me four. OK, how many of you would go to see Nathan in concert? I guess that settles it. OK, time to go. Bye, Becky. Bye, Bye Jess. Bye, Becky. Bye, Jess. Nice to meet you, Nathan. Looking for someone? At ease, Captain. <laughs> Good infiltration maneuver there, little soldier. We call it sneaky in the civilian world. <laughs> I'm sure they would like to see you. Nah. I just came by to see that you're OK. I think they would like to see that you are doing OK as well. Look at me, little soldier. Well, you could use a shower, but they don't really care about that. <laughs> Come on, Captain, go say hello. Come. Uh, I'd rather not. You know, someone once told me that it's not cool to run away from those who love you. They do? It's time to face the music, Captain. <laughs> Captain Miles. Where have you been? Here and there. Well, oh well. Look who we have here. If it isn't good old Captain Miles. I hope you're here to stick around, because we can use all the help we can get in keeping this place open. What do you mean? We were turned down for next year's grant. What about the kids? We don't know. They may end up living on the streets if we don't think of something very soon. <clears throat> well, if you plan to stick around, I suggest you shower first. <laughs> and we'll fill you in. Captain? Yes, ma'am. I contacted the mayor's office, but no answer yet. OK, well, um, try again. This time, ask for Mark Robinson. Isn't that your ex-boyfriend? Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. He still suffers from fatal attraction. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Captain Miles, well, don't you clean up well? Thank you, Miss Cap. And thank you for the shower and the new clothes. Oh, well, you're welcome. We're just glad you're back on your feet. Let's save an orphanage. <laughs> okay, first we need to get organized. We have to figure out who does what. I can draw. Okay, Jenny will be drawing. How about you, Scooter? I can spell. Great. We are going to need the diners for the posters and the flyers. Well, I can help with that. In fact, we all can, right, guys? Yeah! Every single sound I hear, every single wave I'm here, it's all about music. It's all about music. I don't even have to try, even when I close my eyes. It's all about music. It's all about music. Garbage cans, pops and pens, give me a beat.
So you guys have been a little busy lately. Would you mind explaining this? It was her idea. Jess? Fundraising? You know, that thing that you do to raise money for needy people. Don't patronize me, young lady. I know what fundraising is. I just got a call from the theater asking if I wanted to book the concert that night. Can we? You can't just assume that because they have nothing scheduled that I can just go ahead and book something. Why not? Yeah, why not? You said this was an emergency. Oh, we did say that. Mm -hmm. But we, we can't, I mean, Nathan has a very special talent, but I don't think he's ever performed anywhere. That's what I told them. He played in the hospital, and he was awesome. Right, guys? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was quite sensational. Well, that, that, we got a bigger problem. That was a theater, and they have received over 300 requests for tickets for this concert. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 Looks like we're yeah. going to a concert. You guys, yeah. Uh, no. No longer here. What? This moon. I, I don't feel her anymore. As long as we don't let her go, she's always going to be here. But I want her here with us. I know, buddy. Me too. We got to keep the faith, though. I'm running out of it. No, you can't say that, okay? Not now. Dad, I 
we ever going to see mom again? I knew it. Is everything all right? Yeah. I don't think he's up for it. Besides all this, I mean, have you heard him play? Yes, he's a sensation. Really? Yes. May I have a word with your son? Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, little soldier? No. Anything I can do? You can find my mom. I wish I could. But there's nothing you can do for me. A lot of people out there depending on you. Your mother would be quite disappointed to hear that. Oh, she's not gonna hear because she's dead. Never underestimate the heart of a soldier. Especially that of your mother. Quite some years ago, I was badly wounded. When my Humvee hit a roadside bomb, I was the only survivor. I lay there for hours, unable to move. Then something got a hold of me, and I began to crawl. I crawled for four days. No water, no food. Allied forces found me, brought me to base, and here I am. Never underestimate the heart of a soldier. She's got a lot to live for. And sometimes, that's the difference between life and death. <sighs> Me, I didn't want to face life at all. Then I came across a little soldier who told me it was time to face the music. It's very clever, Captain. <laughs> you got an orphanage to save. Time to face the music. Good evening, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. I have the honor of introducing to you for the first time a young man who will rock your world. Please give it up for Nathan. My name's Nathan Peters, and um, I'm very thankful for everyone who's coming here to save the orphanage. I've really gotten to know a, a lot of great people there, and um, I'm making great friends, and so I would like to thank everyone for coming here to save the orphanage.
This song reminds me of my mom. Heroise by Beethoven. benefit for the uh, orphanage. Oh, okay. Catch 
Really you? Yeah. Yeah, buddy, yeah. 